So from all that food packaging and product packaging that's out there in the world, we can turn that into any uh, new materials from polypropylene, which is one of the least carbon footprint material, uh, which is all your milk cartons, uh, all your uh, food packagings, uh, microwavable containers, all the way to HDPE, LDPE, which are plastic bags, um, and all that uh, wrappers that you put over your uh, food uh, and candies, and um, uh, any type of water packagings and drink packaging, PET uh, and PP. Okay, the chairs are made from recycled PET fabric. Uh, or we turn that into these um, uh, what we call uh, uh, kind of like shoelaces and we can weave them into different format just imagine you're uh, weaving a um, bamboo chair okay and also we are using a lot of a chair of for example polypropylene as a structure of a chair so from the surface of a chair is made from old water bottle all the way to the frame of the chair is made from a uh, food container and all the way to the joints of the chair is made from recycled aluminum. So everything is post-consumer from our daily consumptions. The ceiling looks like origami, but it's actually made from um, recycled DVD. Okay, so it's a type of e-waste that we no longer need. Okay, but that is a very good material. Uh, PC is like a space age material for, and is even for all the bulletproof glass. So we're using that for sound insulation. The foil is designed for sound insulation and the natural uh, light translucency of polycarbonate, and we allow the light to pass out from the material. So it become a quite an interesting, uh, high value added upcycle material, building construction products. But human beings, uh, we're not always wasteful. As a society, we have always recycled, okay? We always try to make goods as durable as possible, uh, to use as long as possible, and even when it's after use, we transform that into something new. That has been around uh, since forever, okay? Only in the last 80 years, we forgot about that. Um, our grandparents does it, and we're just not doing it. And for our generation, we're missing that consciousness that this is a must and uh, we must go on like that uh, however uh, m many of us uh, are lack of we're missing the technology bits we're missing the power bit we're missing the concept bits that this is possible because most of our people will tell you this is not possible and part of the reason is globalization most of our manufacturing are dispersed everywhere else in the world so for the developed world who has a concept doesn't have the uh, know-how of making for the people who make uh, who doesn't have the concept of sustainability of circularity uh, are just producing for somebody who actually doesn't care at the end because they just care about the convenience we are always uh, lured by the convenience uh, so Taiwan is unique in this couple of position one is culturally um, it's much more frugal here and the second is um, the government has, uh, in the last 20 years, has put in place an incentive system for recycling and a shaming uh, logic to force people to recycle. Okay, so on two prongs. Uh, so incentivize and punishment for not recycling. The third, I think, the, is also one of the most important part why Taiwan recycling rate is at this high, one of the highest in the world, is because it has a lot of manufacturing facility in Taiwan. So many of our products are developed and produced still mostly around this part of the world. So this material, if it's transformed properly, it will have value, okay? So this by default is a huge advantage over a lot of different uh, countries.